So, when I did my little rant on Disney's Lorcana, I begged people to please drink from another well when it comes to game design. I had specifically called out what I call magic alikes, that being games that base their design around Magic the Gathering. If the game has, like, five colors and high fantasy monsters played using color-coded resource cards with the goal of attacking past opponents' monsters to damage your opponent's life points, you're probably playing a magic alike. Immediately adjacent to this are the Duel Masters alikes. If your game is similar to what I described before, but instead uses some cards to count life totals, has power units counted in the thousands, and implements any card as resource or an alternative way to pay set costs, you likely have a Duel Masters alike, and there's a lot of bleed over here. For instance, I consider both Argent Saga and Dragoborn to be both Magic alikes and Duel Masters alikes. It's a Venn diagram for sure. And I feel that its presence has sort of shackled a lot of game designers who are used to its structure. Games about paying a resource cost to summon monsters who do battle to attack and defeat the opponent directly. You can see how that might get old after a while. It would be like if, after the success of Doom, all other shooter games were the same sort of running and gunning style it used forever. But eventually, in the real world, we got games that use cover, games that use platforming, games that use stealth and even games made for kids that use guns that suck up garbage. Also since then, Doom's first-person tech has been used for puzzle games, swimming games, exploration games, comedy games, the whole gamut. The way I see it, trading card games have a similar kind of potential beyond what so many games adhere to, and I think people are starving for a new experience. As for the reason I think so many people base their games off of Magic's mechanics, it's, well, because it's easy. I'll elaborate. First off, Magic is a very consistent game. Both players slowly ramp up in power through the accumulation of sturdy resource cards, each color has a distinct idiom, and life points are viable as a resource as much as a measure of victory. The tension comes from trying to predict how an opponent responds to your moves, take advantage of when your opponent overextends themselves, and hope that your draws remain consistent and helpful. This very stability is likely why so many people duplicate it. A design deviation here or there isn't really going to upset this balance. Now, I know, the other two members of the Big Three are also about monsters fighting, but their experiences of play are completely different. While Pokémon shares its color-coded once-per-turn resource cards with Magic, those cards themselves are attached to the creatures using them and vanish when that creature is defeated, giving them a more volatile quality. The goal of Pokémon is also to defeat a certain number of your opponent's creatures, rather than depleting an opponent's life points. There is a lot more card flow unrestrained by the lack of mana costs, and the risk-reward factor of investing this vulnerable energy into which creatures is what drives the tension. Yu-Gi-Oh! Like Magic involves monsters fighting to deplete life points, but focuses a lot more on breakthrough damage and rapid combo building, where the number of cards you can get into your hand is the big difference maker, with nary a resource card to be found. Instead, opponents trading negating effects and destruction effects to create a very swingy game. And there are other possibilities. The Neopets game, for example, throws away pretty much everything Magic has to offer. Being a lane-based game where a set number of the eponymous Neopets compete in contests in order to bank cards worth victory points, and where the Neopets you have in play are your resources to play certain cards with their limited actions per turn, meaning the action economy is what dictates a lot of your decisions. You have games like Universes and Flesh and Blood, which change the fighting from indirect through creatures to direct in an all-out slugfest, Universes being the first game in the long list of fighting game-themed TCGs to really get that feel right, using a twist on Decipher's old Destiny mechanic to give each move risk and reward. These are some other wells you can drink from, new possibilities to explore, new ways to push the genre forward. And there was a time where there was much more variety, such as the Wild West and Flood eras, but a lot of those games were sort of the throw-against-the-wall-and-see-what-sticks variety, and not games designed to give a particular experience. When developing a game, it's important to try to figure out what experience your game gives and what you're trying to do with it. What sorts of things do you want to be consistent? Which do you want to be swingy or unpredictable? For example, I'm currently developing a game that's experimenting with alternating activation of all things to get the sensation I have in mind. 
Regardless of how your game plays out, it's important to make sure that your game requires an element of risk to advance. As much as people say they want high consistency, without an element of risk, there are fewer opportunities for player interaction. In fact, it's cards that eliminate risk that tend to wind up on the chopping block for a banning. This is something I've been figuring out in my own game design. It can be nice to have an idea that's basically wouldn't it be cool if, but be sure to keep your eyes on the bigger picture. How should the players feel? What sorts of choices do they have to make? Where does a player have to take a bit of a leap for a reward even if it opens them up to punishment? At the end of the day though, what matters is that the game you've made can create a certain experience, one that differs from those that have come before to help stand out and scratch the itch of the hungry community. While a lot of games rely on magic structure because of how reliable it is, sometimes you gotta take a risk. Keep these things in mind and you too can build a better card game. Join us next time on Erratitext.